Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. We are in the supposedly cursed bookstore and as the number one supernatural detective around, we have to investigate. So let's waste no time and uh, try doing a thing. All the curtains open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Seminis wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. A small, terrified oh, escapes from pleasance or plaisance as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Looks like Guillaume Le Mion, that hair poster. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semini's trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Unlock the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. You feel the tiny hair on the back of your neck rise up, as if someone's standing right behind you. Um, Kim, maybe you should go first. Detective, you're the one in charge. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Fair enough. If you're scared... He apparently has something to say. What is this place? The lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It's the netherworld beyond the veil. No, it's a gym. He disagrees. It looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your back before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a ray of street light falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. Mm, what if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. I need to look for a supernatural explanation where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? So he advised us to equip the flashlight, so let's do that. Sand dripping from the punch bag. What's that? Shot put ball? What is that? A ball you use for playing shot put. You feel like you should hold onto this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Okay. The poster says, Sitius Fortis. The rest is worn off. Oh, what was that? It smells like leather and sweat. Barbell. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. No. Look, Kim. It's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight mm, may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? Should be a felony. 
it would be a violation of EPIS safety regulation if the gym is still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. I won't try it. Probably blow out my back or so. Or worse. You're not the physical type. Ooh, it's very dark here. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Is that an old school? A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Wild animal statue in the dark, stuffed and mounted. What's that? Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Ah, uh, why does why do they have mannequins? A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. But where are the clothes it used to display? Money. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Creepy music, great. Skiss with a slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Seal rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Looks like someone tried to con reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skiss and rotor blades both bear the same slipstream logo. It seems like they s that they started out making one, failed to turn profit, and then pivoted to producing another one. Uh, but the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. What a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Reality is ruthless. Oh. Production schedule. The cube-like crisscross of filament feels oddly fragile in your hand. Its intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, production schedule. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Ooh, would need a radio computer for that. Okay. Mainframe. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped hard and wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you circle around the machine, just sitting here without anyone inside. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? This is the REM Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a felt mainframe and a REM uh, compatible printer. You, do you think I should turn it on? We have one way, one of these at the station, but I never really learned anything. To, okay, but before I turn that on, since we have this one item to use it, I want to look around first. Project Dreadboard. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbled sketches and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writings has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Look at the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make an you make out autumnal autumnal. 
Candle Welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin and even ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal side space. You should adopt one of those Welkins as your persona, no longer a mere man, but a Welkin. One of the Welkins towering among the rest appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. It's Varabimiro. A high Welkin. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non welkin races will be purged. The Hulder, the Dwerg, the humans, and even the Headless Men, all of them, perched. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. The Ten can't help but comment, an inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Hmm. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Ah, uh, political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Kim nuts at the welcome facial hair. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Look at the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements and dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm, animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers by boreal dwarks, dwarks, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat-death scenario, desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Viral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Expect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI spend the marker drawn grid. The grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Minimi stems for mini meeting. It's part of bigger framework for managing work called Run. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field and nothingness and concludes, looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the production schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out. Viral, untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role playing since system since the 30s. Okay, so they were developing a role-playing game. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard to not look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Okay. Hmm, could go up.
Frequency fireplace. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Kedron mosaic tiles. Very uh, pedantic. Uh, well, hold on. How do I know how Kedron mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History class. Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies. It seems... Oh, maybe I should write that down? I don't know. Let's write those frequencies down. Not sure if we need them and if we need them, if they are automatically saved. So let's write down... You... K V one two three point six one two three point seven and one two three point nine. Okay. So written notes to sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Um, so we're dealing with something medical here? You think so? The web is compromised of radio station. All lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station at once. Oh, so they m maybe the point was to... It, basically, what it sounds like is that they... We're trying to create like an online RPG, right? Or the version of this world's online RPG. They must have had massive air with these things don't come cheap. Who's the game master? Some are very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call into a call in station, it looks like. A list of names under the station suggests people across six isolas would be playing. Mundi, Insulin, Katlagrad, Samara, and even Ilmara. There's no way a little basement city working here could pull anything like this off. My god. The lieutenant leans closer with his finger tracking the manning rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. The cost of air with the low must have been huge. Exactly. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained finger clean against the jacket. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble and echo from to uh, times long ago. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Probably also a nice allegory to game development. Skills across notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Okay, before I use any doors. Let's turn on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing virescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left tangling, disconnected. The filament you, you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good evening, Fortress Accident on Rue de saint Gislain. This is East Insulandian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. 
You mean the glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administration involved. Ah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. This is the police. Please open this thing. The voice recites, I'm a contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder fortress accident. Without filing a warrant with uh, Lintel, I cannot give you access to the farmland. I'm afraid we're not doing that, unless we want to wait a month. I don't have the passwords, then. Received. I will register this long in login attempt. Don't worry, passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Uh, why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. And what's that, this interactive call on radio playing? The setting drowns her response. Any other questions? You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. What are you? A machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. I'm a 74-year-old and my name is Yvonne. The lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are, are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They're merely cautious, says the old lady. It's my job to protect their filaments, or filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulinian station. But where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulinian repeater station. It's my job. Okay. As for me, well, some static then. I'm sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the river Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bone, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflecting back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Okay. So we need to find... Nothing happens. So I need to find the password. What do you have to say? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Uh, it's, a, it's just a failed business. The only thing is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Or are they planning to do that? Through Colin's station, he nods at the fireplace. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master's Frequency that listens in on the small... The call in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub frequencies. Has anyone ever done that before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Königstein, you know, places with industry. Not in Ravishal West among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter isolary game before. We just don't have the technology. This was a role-playing game. Indeed, those Welkins are a dead giveaway, he points to the chalkboard. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Viral board game, with heat death uh, thrown in. 
Super cool. Someone could, should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped uh, filling out the schedule of the shark world. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality. But Lieutenant tilts his head thinking. Um... The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. A half smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. He says, looking around in the derelict room. The pipes howl and crosses the floor. Okay, he comes through. Let's, let's get moving. Okay. Let's see where we're going now. Maybe we will find the password. Well, we know. Yes. Well, we should also save. I want to do this all again. Oh, look at this. It's a big bear. The fridge? Ice bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is the thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The town doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from a, its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The town takes a peek inside. His hands has found the holster of his gun. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumbled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Ravishal Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge ma magnets, keeping it on the door. Examine the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The tenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies in the light. Somewhere in the past, it's summer. Five-year-old Fafette lets go of her mother's hand, change jingling in her pockets as she shops toward the ice cream stand right across the plaza. So they try to sell ice cream from from this hyper carnivore? I know. An unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Tenant points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Ah. Let's look at the note. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the notes. Someone has scribbled S. I can't believe the offsite copy is still here. The literate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You will you'll find the a filament memory with an offside copy and the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home ASAP. It's important. It's important. I do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care. I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. 
Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hy hypothesis. What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to discotapes, right? It's like one of your discotapes, only for a computer. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? Is that maybe Kuno? Really? The lieutenant looks at you, the corner of his mouth. You don't have a guess? You mean Kuno? Well, I'm sure that kid would love to get his hands on a filament memory, even if he doesn't know what to do with it. He probably tried to pawn it for speed based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker would be? I don't know, I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Interesting. So Kuno might be involved in this. That's cool. Let's connect it. Well, collapse. Central furnace. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door, generally peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No sign of any recent fire. Only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. The echo is so prominent it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway into the food, inside the furnace. I, can, I think I hear someone upstairs. Wait, really? He looks up at the ceiling. He should, we should investigate, see if someone is upstairs. Ooh. Smear your hands with coal. A lush of layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into, into your wrinkles. Your hand looks ancient. Maybe you could paint something with this coal, leaving a cave painting for future archaeologists. No, that would be stupid. Those voices I heard, maybe it's the malignant entity? Plaisance said it lives in the chimney. Alright, the rooms uh, do look like they're connected, but mal malignant entities don't exist. At least not in the supernatural kind. Ah, do we try it? Let's try it. Oh, that scared the hell out of me. Something breaks loose in you. you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney death. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Thank you. You hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of the curtain being pulled aside. The lieutenant nods, then points upstairs. After you, officer. Let's kick it. Ouch! <laughs> the ring echoes through. <laughs> Your toe hurts. Oh, we took one damage. Ouch. Uh, let's, let's heal. Well... After being very smart and solving something, you were very stupid. <laughs> Defrosted and unplugged. <laughs> the flashlight casts a strange shadow and it's in dawn. Okay. Okay. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. Looks inoperable. A hole in the wall. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see it. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. He points up. The rifles under the ceiling. Must be an old weapon cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. 
There is, yes. And here, there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to look inside? Okay. Your hand reaches deep into the darkness, and spiderwebs rum rummaging rolls. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. The town steps closer. Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bold action model with a fine wood stock, in better cos cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. An old bell McGrave from the Revolution. The lieutenant notes with approval. His eyes are gleaming. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean? A rifle here. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still laying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Hmm. Interesting. A broken bell my grave from ages past. Interesting. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Okay. That is very, very curious. Shouldn't we look inside the ice cream maker? Wasn't there? Oh, oh. Or maybe it's this one? I don't know. Frozen ice cream maker. It's still running. Nice. The, that is the one. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It is. It has a hand crackling ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. You slip your fingers out of the frozen lid, but ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A priber would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else, some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try it again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Yeah, okay. Mm. Tools, pry bar. Here we go. Ooh, 3%. Maybe we we'll find something else. Breaker boss. Two cables are plugged into the breaker boss. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge. The black one leads to the ice cream maker. Unplug that one. Maybe it thaws off. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Because it's black, the color of a measurable cosmos. The tenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Unplug this too. Maybe that thaws off the, the ice cream maker so it's easier to open. That's my thought behind it. Ooh, insane mesh tank top, drama. Intercom wires running into breaker box. Oh, 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 wow. That is a hell of a look. Let's go with that, though, for now. Okay, I could go up here. Can I open it? Minus 20. Not strong enough. Ah, let's try it. I mean, at some point we have to have luck with a low percentage one, right? The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the uh, bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. What is this? You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. It's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it, but this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advance to, to get it open. Where do I get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to re requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a, a tool mightier enough. Then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. Okay, fair enough. 
Earth is sleeping. This is all very mysterious. I like it. Oh, we're outside again. Well, let's talk to Kuno then. Before we go. Oh, no. Oh, that is where. Okay. Kuno. Fuck this Kuno key! Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So they just hid it from Kuno, and Kuno actually didn't get it. Oh, okay. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go this way again, back up, and we can talk to whoever we heard through the chimney. There's certainly something. Ah. Choose in a puddle of melting snow, the floorboards cr creak. Someone live here? Postcard. Wonder if those postcards are some kind of collectible. Oh. This tray is full of dice. Colorful poly polyhydrate dots. Hundreds of them. The cane dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Hello, I'm Nia. Bird-like woman sits on the throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. Taps on her head. So what kind of die are you looking for? She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching, yeah. What do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a calling station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the Mostly, table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. And how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about I'm dice? I'm a dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Excellent, does that count? Um... Sure. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set, unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with the rows of precious stones and minerals. Almost looks like looks as if the stones and dyes are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shelves like stalagmites. 
No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. How did she become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to take some polyhydral dice out of cobalt. It was my first order. I grew it from there. You like the role-playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare uh, materials and steady pay. And role players are as customers. They are nice people. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. What do you ma know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling and rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Then looks at his notebook. Then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly out onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus, ruckus behind my window. And you never took your eyes off the work to look outside the window? I might have, she admits, but in this case, all I could have seen would have been my own reflection staring back from the darkness. Slight here, but dark in the yard at night. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I really get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the Whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids, and lately I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. He's heard of the murder, but did not see it, sir. You often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Thank you for your answers. Where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Creative. The town looks around in the spacious room, its ceiling fading into the shadows above. When she arrived here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. I heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the Doom commercial area? I've heard the story. She nods as the wind howls in the front of the furnace, furnace shaft above, but I don't think those stories are true. Pleasance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Pleasance, the bookshop lady, she raises her brow. I've heard her bus business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Yeah, there are hardly any customers, and she has to export her own daughter. All right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling and rack? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hold on, the whirling is part of the doomed central area, commercial area. You could say so. Both houses are, uh, were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. Uh, but it's still a separate building. And then there's me. She sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving f flies to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energy. Strange, isn't it? Maybe it's just because she's so talented and she's been able to woo the curse. Pleasants think that you are the curse. Malignant entity. What does that even mean? The dice made her laugh. Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm a malignant entity? Narrow your eyes very mysteriously. Starting to see there is no curse, only. Honestly, I'm still not sure. This world is a puzzling place. 
Is it now? She squints at you from her desk. I've always thought it's a rather mundane and boring place with no supernatural surprises inside. Well, if you'll ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, let me know. She turns back to her work. That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been there and truthful as far as we can see. Say, The bookstore closes at 21. You'll have to do that tomorrow. Oh, okay. You know what happened to the other tenants. Everyone else is gone. More or less, she adjusts the yellow scarves that covers her hair. Are you interested in anyone specific? Quite a lot of them. Red scuttle in the dark room under the abandoned blow dryers and dusty mannequins. Cobwebs uh, cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. There used to be a hair salon next to the bookstore, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like generous haircuts. They're scared of that word. Bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. It's not about the haircuts, it's about the confidence. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customers should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under her headscarf. What happened to the gym downstairs? It wasn't merely a gym. It was an Artem Artemitaps boxing club, a community project created to steer at-risk youth from youth away from drugs and crime. And who was Artemitap? A kind man from Simsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start a gym, as his way of giving back. Maybe that's what Kuno needs. Hmm, Kuno. Her eyes narrow in the dim light. Who's Kuno? He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window, her face reflecting back in the dark. Uh, how did the community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching back downstairs was full of amphetamines. Not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's got much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with all the debris and the hallway? So many broken window panes. Oh, this one's a mess, she sighs. There's, there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milieus. And who would have, who would have guessed? It was a snuff milieu. And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway, and I have no idea how to get rid of it. But what's a snuff mirror? It's a sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murder murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off of it. Nothing change, changes in her tone as she says it, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out to in the world. Don't worry, the ISB has a separate division to deal exclusively with unlicensed sub Rosas. The lieutenant turns to you. This is now a problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw a lot of mounds laying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Oh, okay. I noticed mannequins. Preview mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? What in the name of. Mm, the atelier produced a certain collection that used shitin among the materials. Apparently, shitin is made in the Occident where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all these. All kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest shit suppliers, 
which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And naturally, all the, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in Chitin from then on. The Atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Mm. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Mm, really? She looks at the windowsill, where a dead fly is laying on the back, legs curled up in a bow tie. Anyway, what's the deal with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream after they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis. Their chief executive took off on vacation with all their money. The rest, uh, she rests her chin on the hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think uh, he's still sending out holiday transmission from to Lula or Tiumutiri or Kashakor or whatever it is. What does the transmission say? The usual. I imagine that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile whines before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. The man is stern. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiff in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still laying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They we're just props. I return to them. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take way too long. I saw a strange machine next to a blackboard in the main room. Fortress Accident, the radio game station. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing system every now and then. Once I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Viral. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their work very seriously. Even if they seem to be kind of Chronically liberal with their schedule. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual, they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done in time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. Really, they must have been on a gigantic ego trip. That's what I thought, because when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and show up to work at time. Well, showing up to work at time is very hard. And so is producing something extraordinary. Her eyes wandered to the shelves full of prototypes and discarded models. Uh, there was an ice cream company with a terrifying taxidermy bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revishal Ice City. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans close, her hands on her knees like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What are the other I did? Right? It was really just one, and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to mend the booth. And by mend the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their board magazine browsing. She leans back disapproving. Oh, like the Fritter girl. <laughs> Frit does the same thing. <laughs> I know a girl just like that. She works at uh, and Frit as a cashier, and she's not particularly friendly. Employing sulky teenage girls is widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends looting near the shop. At least the that's what happened to Ravishal Ice City. They already had the bear. She uh, closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear, she repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples, like trying to suppress a headache. D 
didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Revishal Ice City lost a prize war to its rival, Glacé 5000. Glacé 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only five cents a piece out of regular fridges. Uh, I killed the bear. You did what? She rolls her swivel chair an inch closer to you, Ancha. I had to kill the bear. To become the bear. I can see. Is she nuts? Hanging up and down. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on this dissecants. He called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. Megatherian. Megatherian. Not the dice, man. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. But telling you to do more drugs mostly. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. Do you? The dice man raises an eye. Well, good luck keeping it under control. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad finishing the story. The temperature has dropped in the cover of the night. You see frost on the windows. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Actually, I had another question. Uh, I have more questions about this building. Okay, that's it. Do you know the Viral Untethered setting? I want to die for that. Do you have any cursed die? What do you mean by cursed die? As cursed as the commercial area. Alright, how about I surprise you? Come back in 8 hours with 7 real and I give you your cursed die. Sure. Sounds good. Ah, let's try it. Yes! Gusts of cold air sweep through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Hey, Nea, the curse is real, and I figured out why it has spared you. Did we already talk about that? She, t she asked as the wind continues to seep in through the cracks of the chimney. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the Doom commercial area. What are you talking about? She's, she's, she says, shaking her head. My address is exactly the same. Rue de San Gislaine 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up. Yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. Touch the safety curtains. In a chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks around in the makeshift nest that she has carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my building was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? Uh... Let's say I have my own methods. Unusual methods. And what does it mean that I'm safe from failure? No one is really safe from failure. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion on her face. What? You don't know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. Looks like a regular piece of jewelry. It's a mourning ring, she replies. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with a little I, ha I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. Why are you telling me this? It wasn't just the jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. I 
And now you're telling me what? She closes her eyes. That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an, an abandoned chimney. Don't call it dumb. You made it nice and cozy here. Yeah, she stared out the window, not really hearing your words. Maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a pre precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like, like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be. You can try again. Still, there's something inherently violent, even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a dice, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. She picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. Thought gained. Precarious world. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Okay. So, probably no curse. As we expected, really. We need to pick up the dice tomorrow. We need to report back to Plaisance about your finding, but they have closed now. We got the postcard here. So I guess it's time to leave the place. Well, let's talk to Kim. He wants to say something. We should something. think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for my damages yet. We should take care of that, then. I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the streets. We'll figure something out. Okay. Maybe you have to foot the bill. Okay. So, probably no curse. Just very bad business practices all around. So on the other side is closed for the night. Come back tomorrow. Okay. We're also supposed to meet uh, Kim on the balcony of the Whirling on Racks to have a discussion there. That's one of our tasks or quests or whatever you want to call it. But this is where we will end it for today after uncovering the truth about the curse or at least finding out more about uh, the building and why everything fell apart. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you think if, I mean, we don't, I mean, at least I don't know if there are any supernatural things in this world. Is it, is it a curse? Is she maybe still casting a curse and we don't know about it? Or was it all just superstition and bad business practices? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you all for watching today's episode of Disco Elysium. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Share the video with, with friends, family and the people on the internet. That all helps me out a whole bunch and will bring you more content in the future. I will be back with more Disco Elysium tomorrow. Until then, have a great time.